All right, everybody. Finals time here. As I couldn't help but resist it and go out there and say, Tim, what did you go do? Get your insurer in, buddy? Jeez, <laughs> man, we've been waiting forever. Nah, that's quite all right. Looking forward to this one as we have our finals, ladies and gentlemen. In doubles cricket, your defending champions, Garrett Rakowski and Steve Hilger, taking on Tim Eisner and Eric Bob Zine. Should be a fantastic matchup. Will Stewart, Nick DeShera here. Nick, what do you think about this one? I mean, this is exactly what we wanted to be. Three out of the four guys that you saw on our flyers leading up to this event right now. I mean, between Garrett, Steve, and Tim, they're building up a lot of hype, a lot of momentum going into this final. And, I mean, of course, Garrett and Steve, after coming off a big win at NDA, want to go back-to-back -back here for two years in a row. Well, I, wanna, I do want to say, off the top of my head, I believe Bob Zine and Eisner were your level two champs last year. Oh, really? Is that um, let me go ahead and just see if I have this tab available here. It does not look like it, so never mind there, buddy. Apologies on that one. I'll see if I can find that information in the background, though. So should be a good one nonetheless. Put this one up here. That's a good shot there from the bullet there. Continuing their assertive control. As they have that two number advantage going off here. Yeah, it looks like Matt and Luke were the division champions there. That's right, because Eric Bob Zine and Tim Eisner took second last year. In division in one. In division one. So that was my mistake, is I actually did see him in the finals. So this is a repeat of the finals. So that is... That's pretty cool to see. That is very cool to see. Hilger here needs three, finds three, right over to the 16th throwing those porky signatures. And Eric's just going to switch over. And Eric's been playing in phenomenal form right now. Going right to those 15s. He's going to have to get underneath that dirt. He does with room to stack it. And he, wow, that is a well-thrown nine mark. Listen, we see a lot of different types of big rounds, but you can see everyone there giving some respect. Not only is it at a pivotal point where you need to shoot it, but then to shoot it in a high skill of working your way underneath that first dirt just shows the level of control. That was a great shot there from Eric. But of course, Garrett not messing around here. Responds right back with a seven mark, getting them two bulls away from taking leg number one here. Yeah, Eisner's just going to have to make a stand on the bulls here. But even with a double, will not really be enough. So, yeah, now Porky. Three darts to find two bulls for leg number one here in the finals. And to get them at match point. The one and only online warrior, Mike Maloney, joining us. <laughs> <laughs> going to resist that one, Mike. As Hilger looks to take the first leg and does. One nil lead for your current king seat holders. It, did you see that there? I did not. On the losing side, Eric, by the way, Eric Bobson just threw a 7-0, by the way, and lost. That's He played dang near perfect. Apparently, Tim hit four nine marks in a row earlier. So that is pretty impressive there if you're Tim Eisner. But it just goes to show you, I mean... Both of these teams have played together numerous times before. They're comfortable with each other. They don't even have to speak to each other to know where they're going, what they want to do, their strategy, and how they want to implement it. So will you see some talks? Yeah. Will you see a lot of it? No, because they already know. It's just encouragement is what it really is going to come down to. Absolutely the case here. And, it, and that, that's it. When you develop that like synergy where you're basically symbiotic relationship with each other, it really, it really just shows how well it can go playing with the same partner and developing that relationship. The 
this probably will be our last event of the evening. Just to forewarn you, is that everything's pretty much rounding out at the same time here in this uh, North Hall. I was just not going to waste any time going right over. And then finding that switch up in the last start there to expand that point lead. And Garrett's like, how can I sneak one more in there? No, he needs to after he had a pretty slack attempt on the last go around trying to make up for lost ground. And he does make it work there, betting it up for the bullet. Oh, they're stepping in, looking for an opportunity here, and the opportunity is on the 18s. Six mark would be handy there. Even a four would be good. Now, what does he do from here? I think you just you either go 19s or you stay. And he went 19s there. Go ahead and close him out. I mean, doing the math of the situation, I don't like the 19 switch up there for one reason. And the fact is a first start triple means that they get two singles on their last two darts there to close with point advantage. But of course, that only matters if you hit the first start triple. Not going to be the case here. And it looks like that's going to be more than the correct decision for Hoger. Yeah, you can see... Eisner's a little unhappy because he knows this could be detrimental here with, with the bullet stepping up with the sick comb over, comb over of the day. <laughs> Taking his time knowing that this is one of those pivotal rounds where if you hit big, it pays off. Oh, no. Ooh, that's a big switch that's up there. That's a big switch indeed gutsy switch from Rakowski, but hey, big darts. And you can see Hilger saying, yeah, I like it. I like it. Well, especially that you're on match point with the King Seed advantage. I think taking a big risk like that can definitely be warranted in the situation here. Eric, while finding five, doesn't really punish it. So again, Hilger here, trying, gonna look for at least a four mark on those 18s for comfortably moving along. He's staying there for at least one more. Oh, look at this. He's going for... Oh, he does go for that switch up. But that was a great shot there. Was a fantastic shot. Hilger and Rakowski have put themselves in position, potentially, to win this one. Pending oh. a big mark from Tim. Oh, oh he was my. all over it. All over it. Oh my goodness. So Garrett's able to close right at it here. He's going, yeah, he has to look at those 18s. If you go right for those 15s and miss, it gives them such a good opportunity. Hitting that 18 there is good, but not necessarily enough. It, again, perfection here needed. Oh, and just yeah. barely, you can see he knew how important that dart was and it just barely flighted. Yeah, Eric has to recompose, knowing that this last triple is still extremely important here. Well, Hilger Ooh. with match darts here, and if he gets rid of those 15s, he can basically guarantee the one mathematically in the 18s or going right for the bulls and hitting it big there. We'll see if Hilger can put this one in, and that's exactly what he does. Trip 18, trip 15 to close those out. And yeah, sort of placed out of there from Porky. Well, Bobson and Eisner are going to need a miracle at this point to kind of save this one as Hilger and Rakowski are continuing their dominance that we just saw from last week. We get some strategy takes in the chat. I mean, nothing wrong with that, but it's bound to happen. Everybody has a slightly different strategy when it comes to the game my strategy is to not play it and just talk about it 
and I did have an interesting talk about like CSC and stuff, and it's just getting too hard out here in the streets for that. And Garrett Rakowski, Steve Hilger proving it. Back-to-back -back champions in doubles cricket. <laughs>